Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. So I really wanted to make a steampunk inspired bottle for my backdrop and that's what I did with this one. So you can see it looks like it's been hammered together by pieces of metal and then I've used cogs every so often um, and a little metallic sort of face on there as well. Now I didn't know what I was going to use this bottle for so I did spray paint it with silver originally um, and if I was going to do it again I would recommend spray paint it black if you're going to use these same techniques. Uh, but originally I wasn't sure what I was going to decorate this with. Now this is a Super Sculpty and I mainly used this because I had a lot of it um, and so I needed a fair bit of clay to cover a fair bit of surface area. Now I find it helps to cut the clay uh, when you're trying to um, warm it up in your hands. It just helps um, split the clay up and you know helps you to manipulate it till it's smooth enough, warm enough for you to start molding it. Because um, any clay that you pull out of the packet will be very stiff. And then you want to roll it really, really flat so that it's only a couple of mil thick. Now once it was rolled out, I used a Stanley knife um, to cut it. Well, it's sort of like a Stanley knife. It's for PMC. It's just a blade. Um, but I didn't want the pieces to be straight in any way. I wanted them to look like old... Um, jagged bits of metal, scraps, so I've really swirled my cuts. Now you want to start applying this like a patchwork because it's meant to look like it's been hammered together by all different little scraps and bits and pieces. And I'm pressing it into the bottle so that it um, starts to adhere to the bottle a little bit and also making sure to overlap my pieces. Now you'll notice I do roll it out a bit more when I've cut it because I realized it wasn't as thin as I wanted it to be. Um, I really wanted it to be only a mil or two thick so I really tried to you know flatten it out. Um, and I'm overlapping the pieces both for stability um, and because I want it to look like how it would if you actually were um, putting this together from scrap bits of material, you would of course have to overlap them and bolt them to one another to make something like this. So, you know, I'm really trying to mimic that in the design. Now, you, you can have gaps where the bottle shows through, and I did that. Uh, but what I tried to do, like I said, is just make sure that everything was overlapping somewhere so I wanted I didn't want a floating piece of clay on its own that part that decision was stability um, reasons because if it's not sticking to another piece of clay it's possible it wouldn't stick as well to the bottle on its own um, so that's why I chose to do it that way Perhaps it would have, and you could always glue it on if you know you wanted to have something sitting out on its own. But uh, I just decided to make sure everything I did was overlapping somewhere.
So this is a polymer clay face that I had in my stash. You could put anything there really um, as added decoration and paint over it and be have it become part of the steampunk aesthetic. Now you'll see I'm rolling little bits of clay into balls um, for I guess um, like they look like bolts or screws that are holding the pieces of metal together or what is meant to look like metal. So I'm just rolling little balls all about the same size, putting, trying to put them where I think they would actually be if this was made of metal. And then um, I'm just using a little clay tool I have to press a line into the middle of it. Then I wanted a piece of the um, clay to go over the face as well to really hold it in place and also to make it look like it was part of the design. Now the paint that I'm using here is a special kind of paint and it's a Merbond is the brand and it's a rust paint and it's a three step system. Now this is completely optional. You could paint this black instead and buff it with the um, Art Alchemy wax like I end up doing. Uh, but I wanted to experiment with this paint and see what effect I could um, bring by using it. To be honest, I probably needed more time and I wasn't willing to wait to edit the video so um, the curing time on the rust can take a little bit and I, I just wasn't getting the rust effect quickly enough so although I did start with this um, I ended up cheating and or I guess not really cheating but I used a different paint technique. But I have used this rust paint before on projects. It works very well. Um, you do need to put a few coats of your um, first layer on to really get a lot of rust um, and then, you know, keep sort of applying. So it's sort of a multi-step process, but a really interesting finish because you can get an actual natural rust finish on things. So, you know, I recommend you give it a go if you're looking to get a rust effect on something. So here I've got my Art Alchemy Wax as you can see and I'm just buffing this into the high points or the flatter parts of the metal. You don't want to coat everything too much. This is similar to a dry brush method where you want the black to stay in the um, deepest crevices um, to give an, an actual metal look to your piece. Now you could put a lot of cogs on here or do what I've done and just use a few to give that steampunk look. I didn't have a ton of the larger cogs which is why I've been strategic in how I place them. I'm using E6000 glue to glue these on uh, because it's nice and strong and I use that for jewelry making so I have plenty of it on hand.
Now I'm just using this magic tape so that I can hold the pieces into place that are on the side otherwise they might slide off before they can glue and I just do that to speed up the process I mean if you don't have the tape you can just do one side at a time but just make sure that um, nothing's going to slide off while it's being glued into place Now of course I did bake this in the oven before I did the paintwork um, but I didn't show that part of it so just use the um, back of the packet to use the right settings to bake it. And that's the finished piece guys so I hope you've enjoyed watching me create a steampunk bottle. Um, definitely give this a go if you want something like this in your own room. Uh, and hit subscribe and for the rest of you I shall see you next time in Feywood. Bye guys.